Allah says there's several doors in Jahannam. And for every door we have an allotted amount of people to go through. Quran speaks. He said, Hawiya is for Fir'aun. Hawiya is for the Munafiqeen. Inna al-munafiqeen fi dark al-asfal min al-nar. Allah says the Munafiqeen, the hypocrites will be in the lowest portion of the fight. And that is where Fir'aun is, even lower than Shaitan. Because Shaitan, no matter what, never ever claimed he was Allah. Fir'aun said, Ana rabbukum al-a'la, I am your Lord. Then comes Jaheem. In there is the Mushrikeen, those who made shirk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thereafter is Saqar. Saqar is for those who accepted Islam and then renegated and went out of the fold of Islam. Allah save us. Then subhanallah is the Lada, that is where shaitan will be. And the fire worshippers, they will dwell in a place called Lada. Then is the Yahud, those rebellious, disobedient Yahud, whom killed and massacred and assassinated the Anbiya. They will be in Hutama. And finally the Nasara, those who said Allah has a son, they will be burning in Sa'i. Then there was a long silence. And subhanallah, after this long silence, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam looked at Jibreel and he said, Oh Jibreel, what is the silence for? And Jibreel said, Haya and mink out of embarrassment and shyness from you, Ya Rasulullah. He said, Go on. He said, I said six doors. You know, people say, I want paradise. I want paradise. I want to go to paradise. I ask you, show of hands, who wants to go to paradise? Put up your hand. That's the entire hall here, mashallah. Well, to get there, you need to die. <laughs> la ilaha illallah. <laughs> who wants to die? No one. I tell you what, it's our duty to take care of the life we have. And on top of that, it's our duty to be merciful. To you look at my life. People might be looking and say, oh, what, what challenges does this guy ever face? He's living the life, as they say, right? That's not true. You would never, ever want to live my life. Not for a day. Trust me, not for a day. Allah gives everyone a certain capacity to take things. I remember one of our sheikhs, and I'm going to end on this note, I think. Uh, I have a bit more time, inshallah. Okay, few, a little bit more time, inshallah. Don't worry. Uh, one of our sheikhs said that a student of his came to complain. Sheikh, I have problems, big problems. So he was explaining exactly the way I was today to say, look. Aisha radiallahu anha says, when I was younger and more agile and more fit, the Prophet raced me or chased me and I ran and overtook him. I beat him. So years passed. Aisha radiallahu anha put on weight. She became bigger. The Prophet is in, a, is in a campaign. He's traveling with the Ashab. In the middle of the desert, he tells the army, go ahead. Go ahead. Me and my wife will stay back a little. So when they're gone and out of sight, the Prophet وسلم, looks at her and says, you want to race? Uh, so they stood and they ran and the Prophet وسلم, beat her, won the race. So he said, this one for that one. The sweetness of joking, it wasn't rude and vulgar and obscene and over the top and difficult. This one for that one. Aisha radiallahu anha says, I used to watch him from the corner of my eyes when we used to eat. So I used to take a piece of meat or a morsel of meat and bite it and put it back in the plate. He used to pick up that morsel, turn it to where my mouth had touched it and bite from the same place and look at me and I would blush. Your prophet was good to his family. Be good to your families. Do you see the standards that the Rasul has set? Learn Muslim, learn to live as your prophet lived. You will shine like the burning stars.